But one question, who's done dug this place up like this? There's 200 dig holes out here. They've dug the VBs off the site. Stay tuned. All right, me and Johnny's out here on a new permission, right? Round two. So this is gonna be first time we've ever been here, got this new permission, and uh, we're gonna go out and detect it. Word is some Civil War buttons come from here, so let's see what happens. We don't wanna jinx ourselves. Johnny says he sees a dig hole. I'm not sure if that's a dig, yeah, that's a dig hole. Doggone right, that's a dig hole, huh? GoPro start recording. strategy guys. So when I get to a site like this and I see that people's been digging it, I'm looking for the iron because I want to get in the heaviest iron. I feel like that's where I have the advantage. And you know, out here, it's just open. And any detectors worth the salt is going to hit a target out here in the open. But when you get in that iron, a lot of the times on these beat up sites, you can make something happen. So Let's see how this unfolds today, but that's the game plan. Looking for the iron content. GoPro stop recording. Here digging, guys. There's dig holes, and it wasn't me and Johnny Bottles. It was like this when we got here. There's dig holes for 75 yards that way, like this. 75 yards that way, and 75 yards that way, and 50 yards that way. There's hundreds of dig holes in here. Can we pull a non-ferrous target today from the blitzed out site? Well, you guys stay tuned and we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. All right, guys. When you got lemons, make lemonade. So we're going to turn a uh, hunting trip into a tutorial video and kind of do some tutorial from the relic site. Now, you'll see some finds in this video. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you nothing stunning, but you'll also see where I show where somebody's been in here and there's probably 200 dig holes. So we are hunting behind people and you know, I'm listening for the deep signals. I'm looking for the heaviest iron because I feel like that's where I have the advantage with the day is two is in the heavy iron. Now I also have an advantage out there on the deep signals if I set it up that way. But let's talk about how I'm gonna set up the day is two. You guys are gonna notice the dirt here is very sandy, it's mild, you get a lot of depth. It's a little bit dry. I wished it was a little bit wetter today, but it's not. Iron content here is what I call moderate. Not really heavy, but moderate. It reminds me of a farm field, like an old house used to be here during the Civil War, and they've drug the iron around and scattered it out. And there's little concentrations as you go throughout the site. So this is what I'm running. I'm running fast, 2.5 reactivity, that, and I'm running my sensitivity up a little bit higher than normal in the fast program. I got it up to 95 one time, 93. So what I'm trying to accomplish here is I've got a separation advantage with the 2.5 reactivity. I've also got good depth with the 2.5 and a 95, 94, 93 sensitivity. Now I had to cut the 95 sensitivity down back from the road over here and get it down to 93. And I switched over into mono wood time because of the EMI, but I was, I mimicked my mono program with the same settings. Now, I bumped the audio response up to five because I wanted to be able to hear the deep faint signals. Uh, the sandy here, the sandy soil, it's been tilled and there was some deep stuff in here today. You'll see me dig a very deep non-ferrous target over there today off a uh, whisper tone. Day is two, fast program, 40, uh, uh, you know, that's running 40 kilohertz, reactivity 2.5, silencer one. Uh, I do have the factory notches. What is it, 22, 23 in there for hot rocks? I just left it. Let me just go through it one more time. 6.1 discrimination. Let me get back over here real quick to the FAST program. I'm not at 6.1, I'm at 6.5 to scrim. Uh, I run a sensitivity, like I said, up higher, 40 kilohertz. Iron volume seven, reactivity 2.5. Now. I've got my, uh, at 584, 
on my pitch, but you can run it up to 603. I like that high squeal. It alerts me when I'm going through the iron. I like the new iron volume on this machine too with these updates that they put on it and the way that I can cut the iron down where I can manage it and not get ear fatigue. So we've got Johnny Bottles wandering around, but let me just tour around right here just a minute. Let me put the camera on the thing and I'm, I'm gonna cut the iron volume wide open, okay? So you guys can kind of hear what's going on. And we'll just put the camera on the stand while I'm waiting on Johnny. And like I said, we're gonna turn lemons into lemonade and we'll make a tutorial. So I'm gonna let you guys hear a little bit of what's going on. All right, let's check out what's going on here. Like I said, moderate, Moderate iron content up in here. Deep iron, I believe. Yep. One very important thing to note is that the external speaker is not conveying all of the nuances that I'm hearing in the headphones. So when I'm editing the video, I noticed that that target sounded better on the video than it really did in the headphones. So keep that in mind. There is more nuance with the headphones on and I can hear the iron buzz around the target a lot more with the headphones on. Pay very close attention to that blurty force tone. That is the key to figuring out the big iron. And then there'll be a sputter sound that you'll hear too on some deep iron, but that force tone will help you on that big iron. This tone here is the one that I'm talking about. You can hear the forcefulness in the tone. A lot of people get that confused early on because it's sounding off on it, but you can hear it's not fooling the day is two. I've heard that said before, but it's not. The day is two is telling you that that's big iron. I'm going to replay the clip, so listen closely this time. I call moderate iron content. Put my headphones on. All right, guys, if you notice off the front of the coil, there's a big piece of iron just in the front of the coil. The non ferrous target is sitting right off behind the big piece of iron there. So had to isolate it and dig it out, but you guys heard it. It's a good tone, and you'll learn as you practice to dig out the non ferrous targets, and you'll learn what the big iron sounds like, too. I said, oh, bull crap, mother. Yep, this bull crap metal mason jar type crap. All right, there it is. GoPro stop. All right, pull. guys, here's a pro tip of the day. Listen to the signal. Look at the ID, but listen to it. Okay, even though it's tone in here, and you guys that are new to the day, as you can hear this like long forced tone i guess i'll dig it up and show you what it is but it's iron 
And so a lot of people will chase iron when they're learning the day is two. But there's there's tonal nuance. It's an old piece of iron. Old square cut iron. And there ain't much. You can hear a lot of that stuff, but you're gonna dig some of it. But that's a little tough pro tip of the day. GoPro stop recording. Another one of our little buddies right there. Check him out. Look at him. Mmm. As I was yeah. saying, you know, earlier, this is where I feel like I have the advantage. When the site's been dug like this, it's up in this heavy, heavy iron. Boy, I think I just scored, dude. I was going to do a little instructional video about this heavy iron, and I thought I had the advantage just because the way it's been dug. You hear that? 78 80 uh-oh that could be a button right there dude deep dude it was just a wisp of a signal right <clears throat> you know I was, I was doing a little instruction video i was talking about this is where i thought i had the advantage in iron and then i pop i hit a deep one man i mean deep look at that that's what 10 inches mm -hmm. Look down here. I see something right, right. Look at that. I would say that that's non-ferrous, right? You see that right there? I'd say so too. Yeah, I'm gonna pop it out. You ready? Yeah. Wow. Oh. What is on that, dude? Check that out. There's something on it, man. What is that? Are you kidding me? What is that? Did you? That's the right kind of nail. Look at that old nail, folks. Huh. This just looks like a piece to a furniture. Uh, yep. <clears throat> Johnny says he's got a buckle. Is it iron or brass? Let's see what he's got. Has he got a D buckle? If so, then that's right. Mixed in with the iron. Dude, that's interesting, right? That's real interesting, right? Check that out. That's heavy brass. Yeah, it was hidden on me right now. There you go, brother. Congrats, man. Yeah. Let's go get it. You got more of a 1930s look here. You got tin. You got brick right here. It's an early, it's, I mean, it's an old brick, but you got tin, you got a brick pile right here. So what's going on here? I don't know. They found something in here, buddy. This looks like gophers went off, man. All right, which one you want to see, left or right first? Well, guys, you've been with me on the journey and you see I've got a shotgun shell. I had to go switch out for my 11 inch coal. Try not to get psyched out by all the dig holes. So let's see if Johnny pulled out something to get me fired up. Let's right. see the that one. This one. Okay. It's a little old hammer. Okay. That ain't quite enough to get me fired up, but it's cool. That is an old <laughs> nail. <laughs> Where'd you get this? Put it in there. Okay, I'm gonna pick this apart. I got a 65 over here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, that, that nail will get you. That's old, man. <laughs> what the you don't walk around digging holes like this for nothing. You know what I mean? Dude, they're dug all the way back to the house. All the way down to the bank. Yeah. Did you go down there? Yeah, it got heavy iron that way. Yeah, I got... There's a lot of uh, spool wire back there. Yeah, I've seen that. I don't know if that's good for the Let's see what we got here. Solid 68. What I couldn't find, and I think that this was farm field and they drug the iron out a lot you know what i mean over the years instead of it being now it's consolidated down there in the woods yeah it was the woods that gets that low. 75 <clears throat> nice uh Nice, uh, hey dude, is this a flat button? 
Is this a sunburst? Looks like it is. It's a sunburst. It is. I can see it from here. Are you serious? <laughs> no, it ain't a sunburst. Oh, no, it's a uh, clock piece. No, it's one of the things they spin. Windsor. Oh, it's a Windsor thing. Oh, it looks like it from here. Man. Ah. <laughs> wow. uh, Remember what I told y'all yesterday? When we thought we had to cut corn, I rode high just for a second, and I got my, it's hobby, man, it's hobby. Such a heartbreaker sometimes. Now my face is smeared in that sand pile. GoPro, stop recording. 72. 75, loud. <laughs> 74, shotgun shell range, but Remember what I told you guys. Could be a two-piece button too. Well. Right there. Nice shotgun shield. GoPro stop recording. 71. Take a gander at that. Nice 71, they missed right here. Is it a shotgun shell? Well, they missed it. That's the whole thing about all this. Is they ain't, it ain't been hunted till I hunted it, is my motto. Is it just a flattened out shotgun shell or a piece of a two piece button? Well, that's a good question. I believe it's just a flattened out shotgun shell. Look at that. Ouch! That was close, but no cigar. GoPro, stop recording. 80, 82, we'll take that. Let's cut that out and see what we got going on here. <laughs> Loud, ain't it? <laughs> 80, hmm. Could that be my long awaited military button I've been looking for for three days, folks? Could be. Or some kind of something. Oh, it's a bull crap. GoPro, stop recording. I'm gonna tell you guys something. Something good come off this place. There's dig holes from one end of the property to the other. Let's see if we can get our something good. You guys check that out. Reckon some other diggers has been in here? Yeah, if you're watching my channel and you're in my area, <laughs> do the old stun of dig back to the truck. GoPro, stop recording.